Hello and welcome to 3DHP, which is 3D Printing and Painting. And I want to talk about PETG today, or PETG. It's been about three weeks ago. I'm building a hypercube, as a lot of you guys know. And I wanted to print all the, the printed parts from PETG. So I ordered some rolls from uh, Ziltec. I got a couple blue, and I've got a red here. And I, this isn't really going to be a review, because I, I haven't tried other brands of PETG, or PETG. Um, so it's just my opinion on what I printed and how I printed it and the quality that came out. So this, like I say, this is not any, in any way a review of filament. So anyway, let me cut my camera here and I'll show you some pictures. Alrighty, there I got my close-up camera. Well, first off, on my uh, CR-10, which I call blue, I uh, printed quite a few of the parts and I had, a, you know, there were like 50 parts I had to, I had to print. So I loaded up the bed with like 10 or 12 parts and printed the batch and then another batch and another batch, basically. Here I can cut the video here and I'll pop it up on the screen and show you what some of that looked like. And to show you some of the quality that I've got, that I managed to get with the blue PTG from Ziltec, I want to show you how all this came out. And I had almost zero stringing. I had one string here or there on the bed. Very, very little stringing, cobwebbing. Very, very little. And I've done a little bit of research before I printed with PETG because I've read online a lot of different people have had trouble with it or couldn't print with it, couldn't get it stick to the bed, different issues. So for you know, I've been printing for over three years now, and I've never tried PETG, mainly because I heard all the problems people were having with it. So, I figured, well, let's give it a shot, because I typically don't have many problems when I print stuff, usually. So, I cranked up the bed to 70 degrees. The recommended temperature for this from Ziltec is 230 to 250, roughly. So, I went ahead and put my nozzle at 230C. And I slowed my speed down to 50 millimeters a second instead of 60, which is typical for a CR-10. And I sliced with Simplified 3D, and then I started printing, and they came out great. Everything came out absolutely wonderful. Here's some other parts. I used no supports, and I had a brim on all my parts. No raft, just a brim with no supports. And I think my infill was like... 2530 on infill for these parts. My layers, I believe, were 644. They came out looking real good. And then over on my TiVo Tarantula Pro that I have, which I still have the original nozzle on it after, what, three or four months now, maybe five months printing with it. I haven't replaced the nozzle. I went ahead and started printing with the red. And look what happened with the red. Tons and tons and tons of cobwebs. Lots of stringing. But once again, I had no supports on it whatsoever. So the parts it printed good. I just got a bunch of cobwebs to clean off. I can take a heat gun. I can melt them away. I can pick some of them off. It's not a big deal. And here's some other parts here. Printed on the TiVo. You can see I got a lot of stringing going on there. A lot of cobwebs. 
which I couldn't understand. So I'm thinking, wow, I just printed all these parts day after day after day on my, uh, on my CR-10 and I didn't have that kind of trouble. Why on the TiVo? So I changed out the nozzle and I haven't changed the nozzle on the TiVo before. So I put another brass uh, 0.4 millimeter nozzle on the TiVo and then I reprinted the parts, same parts. And here's what happened once I put a new nozzle on. Almost zero stringing. So evidently my old nozzle was a problem. Printing with an older nozzle, which I thought printed perfectly fine until I tried to do a PETG. You see a minor string. I've done no post-processing here. Just pulled them off the bed and took the brim off. And here's that box again. This is going to be for my Big Tree Tech SKR version 1.3 board for my Hypercube that I'm working on. At least that's, at, the, at the moment, that's what I plan on using. We'll have to wait and see. And I'm currently on my TiVo Tarantula Pro right now. I'm printing a power... Uh, the Ziltec uh, stock power supply I came with, I'm printing a cover for it. Uh, so I can mount it on the side of the 3030 extrusion, and I'll have an on and off switch that mounts to the side of it. The part wasn't quite right when I printed out the first box. The small hole where you insert the switch in the side wasn't large enough, and there was no mounting holes in the side of it. So one of my Facebook friends, uh, Ben Brady, grabbed the file from my Facebook group. I sent it over to him and he modified it for me. So thank you, Ben. I'm printing it right now. We'll see how it comes out. I could have modified it in Tinkercad, but I hadn't done that yet. And while I was sleeping, Ben got the file. I told him about it on my Facebook group and he banged it out overnight. So I woke up in the middle of the night and he already had it done. So anyway, much, much appreciated. But that's basically what I want to show you guys on these parts. Uh, you know, uh, like I say, the Ziltec Blue PETG, it prints really nice. How does it compare against other PETG? I don't know. But it, it seems to be fine. You know, most of the filaments that I've done reviews on or tried here in my house have been perfectly fine. Most things, to me, print about the same. The number one thing that I'm concerned with is price when I go out to buy a filament. I don't want a fancy brand, fancy name that's going to cost me $25 or $30 a roll. I want something reasonable that I can afford and that prints fine. And most of the stuff that I print with works great. So, just kind of thought I'd put together this little video. Show you guys what I had going on here. Let me click. Let's see here. But yeah, print's really good. Like I say, I got two blue and a red. I'm going to be ordering more. Uh, in the future, you know, I print with ABS and enclosure, and PETG is supposed to be the best of both worlds. A little bit of PLA, a little bit of ABS, have properties of both in it. And I've had no problems with it. I love it. It seems to print great. Will I buy it in the future? Yeah, I'll definitely continue to buy PETG and start using it. And a lot of people have said on some of my uh, comments on my groups, they said, well, don't you make anything practical? Do you just make models? That's it? It's just models? Well, yeah, for like three years now, I've printed just models. But, you know, I've printed a couple helmets, which are cool. I guess I could wear them in 7 Eleven and order Slurpee. Or, uh, you know, practical prints. I got, I'm starting to build this hypercube. I got things like this. I got these inserts uh, melted into them. The, I forget what they're called. They're brass threaded inserts. Starts with a K. I can't pronounce the word properly. But, anyway. So, quick little video. I hope you liked it. I'm going to be getting part three of the Hypercube out here, hopefully today. Got to put some more parts on it. So, please like and subscribe if you liked it. If you got any comments or anything you'd like to see on the show, please let me know. And I'm starting to work on a website now, uh, 3dhp.net. It's under construction. There's only a couple things there, but new website I got going is uh, 3dhp.net. So, thanks guys. Take care.